Hi, friend. Who's Derek here? Talking about that, you will. As you might be able to tell from the title of this video, I am upset at Rachel at the moment for her ongoing efforts to kill our relationship. <clears throat> Not just her, of course. It's as far as I can tell, every woman in the world does this thing. As far as I can tell, I've never met one who doesn't. It's a game called Dance Monkey. They like to play where they complain about something and muse that maybe that's a good in, good reason to, to conclude that we're not meant to be together. And then they go, dance monkey, convince me we are. Um, that's a good way to kill a relationship. Because obviously both parties have to both be equally and fully enthusiastically into the relationship and have made a firm decision about the relationship. That's the thing that Rachel keeps trying to avoid. She keeps thinking that she's still trying to know about whether the relationship is going to work or something. I've explained to her, that's abusive. You can't convince me that I can relax and be comfortable and then pull the rug out time and time again with bullshit dance monkey shit. Last night, dance monkey shit was, oh, gosh, Eric, you're going to check out chicks out in the world, and I'm going to feel jealous, and I'm not sure if that's if that's uh, going to be viable for us. Oh, is this is this something that, that has happened? No, it has not happened. It's a fear that it might happen. So she's just playing Dance Monkey. And, you know, it's like after playing Dance Monkey last night, and I was fucking pissed, understandably. She took her meds and crashed out, and she's been sleeping beautifully all night long. Meanwhile, I've been left with my emotions, which I do not like. I do not like emotions, and I do not like being forced to feel things. Negative things. So, you know, the hope is that Kimberly is going to learn something, Kimberly. I said Kimberly there. Because I was about to segue in talking about Kimberly. The Pope is this time Rachel will learn something, unlike Kimberly, who never learned a fucking thing. Who never learned anything. Kimberly used to do this shit to me all the time. Constantly. And she doubled down, like Rachel did in the car last night. I'd say, okay, well, fine. If you're so sure that, meh, 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 meh. Um, then that's bad because meh, 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 meh. and then she'll go, well, if it's bad, then maybe I'm right. Maybe we're not meant to be together. That's doubling down. You want to piss me off, be wrong. And then when I point out that you're wrong, say, oh, well, maybe that's a reason for me to be even more wrong. No, it's not. Don't double down. I fucking hate Dance Monkey. I spent my whole second marriage playing Dance Monkey. It's just moving the goalposts. There's always a new fucking problem, right? I know she can check and see that I'm talking to her. She's fast asleep right now. I tried to talk to her about it before bed last night. And by the time I, I didn't get to finish before she crashed out. And uh, now she's still crashed out. I went in and tried to talk to her directly about it. But I can only tolerate holding the shit inside for so long before I have to get it out. So I just started live streaming because I was so fucking impatient. Can't believe it's an ISFJ. I know she can see that I'm talking about her. I want her to see this video. I'm upset at her. I'm angry. I am tired of playing Dance Monkey. I'm not going to play it in this relationship. I made that clear at the very beginning. I made it clear every step of the way. Whoever I am with needs to be as into the relationship as me, not any less than you got more TI from F than Effie from Kimberly. Effie is not always positive. Remember, there's a, a negative kind of Effie too that says, I'm going to make this person appear bad. I'm going to manage this per percep perceptions for this person to make them look bad. That's what Kimberly did with me. She was extremely toxic. Rachel's not toxic in that fashion, but she's got some toxic 
uh, you know, habits or something. Dance Monkey is the most toxic of all possible games. It's saying, you cannot relax. You can never take me for granted. That's what's a healthy relationship. Both parties actually take each other for granted. People think that's a negative term, taking somebody for granted. Now, that's a healthy relationship when both people can take the other person for granted and not have to think about that and worry about that. Well, that's tool function for you. Kimberly was too. <coughs> Lots of people loved Kimberly. She had great epi with <coughs> with people other than me. And she had great epi with me too. She fucking won that battle for a long ass time before I got my TI got a got a handle on it. I want to put a final end once and for all to any future instances of Dance Monkey from Rachel. I will not play this game with her anymore. You know, what does she do? She goes, I have a fear that this thing is means that we're not long-term viable. So, okay, well, what is that supposed to do? She's basically saying, okay, now it's time for you to dance for me again, monkey. Dance monkey. Convince me that you're good enough. I'm not going to play that game. She's going to play this morning. When she gets up, I'm going to turn the tables on her. I'm going to say, okay, now you play. I'm going to say, I'm worried that meow is going to meow. And I'm worried that meow is going to meow. Now you convince me you're good enough. See how you like the fucking game. It's like... One realization that she and I had is that we operate on things. Last night, it was that I'm going to, in the future, check out women in the world as we're driving around, and she's going to feel jealous. That was the issue. <laughs> Do I check them out all the time anyway? Well, I've caught you checking out a girl on a couple of occasions before, but generally, no. Okay, well, if you're super sensitive about it, I'll make a point of not doing so ever, obviously. I'm I, I'm an open system, too. I actually seem to forget that other people are open systems. I can change and adapt. I have FE, too. But the thing is, I don't normally check out chicks. I, occasionally, you know, it's like we're driving around. Some, some bouncy chick, big tits and a big ass jogs by. I probably look at her briefly. But, no, I'm, you know... I'm not a an ogler. You know, I'm not a cat caller or an ogler or anything like that. I don't want to do, I don't want to play FE though. See, I I here's our here's our competing strategies in relationships, Rachel and mine. My strategy is do everything right, treat the person properly, don't make mistakes with them, and they'll be happy. Of course not, R. Claire. There's not an actual problem here. This is the problem when you create problems. I am an excellent, perfect partner. My strategy is do everything right, treat the person properly, and they'll be happy. Her strategy is make the other person happy and they'll do everything right. Well, what do you do when the other person does everything right regardless of whether they're happy? Then what do you do? Then you catastrophize that? Oh, it's Cloud Gear, the eternal de devotee. Well, I mean, regardless of what she is, whether she's in the shadow world, whatever the fuck that means, or whether she's just indulging in her fears or whatever, she needs to stop making me do her work. I'm already convinced myself for my own reasons that I'm supposed to be in this relationship and I'm going to be in this relationship forever, barring any dramatic changes to, the, to, to make me doubt that. I operate under that assumption. I take her for granted like I'm supposed to. She needs to take me for granted as well. I'm not going to cheat on her. I'm not going to whatever it is she thinks. You know, it's ridiculous. 
And all she's doing is making me play Dance Monkey. I don't need to have to explain to her why I'm not going to do that or whatever. Um, I mean, she insists that she really does love me, but I don't know. It's like I, I, I'm too intuitive to accept those words in the face of contrary evidence. And I see doubt about the long-term viability as contrary evidence. The other thing, of course, is because she's T-E polar, there's no sense whatsoever of preferable alternatives. Like, you know, that she doesn't get to choose between perfection and this. She gets to choose between this and some other alternative, you know? The fact that this alternative is vastly superior to every other alternative she's ever had is irrelevant Right? You don't you shouldn't just go like, well, I'm not perfectly happy with absolutely everything, so I should leave. You have to go, um this is so much better than everything else I've ever had, and I should never let it go. <laughs> That's sensible, right? But you're right, E3 zombie and I. And, and what does all this fucking dance monkey come from usually? It comes from her read some internet article that suggests that people who do meow might be meow. And I did meow, but it doesn't mean anything at all like that. You know, it's ridiculous. I'm me. Our personal particular experience is determinate. And what some fucking astrology thing says on the internet is completely irrelevant. She can be as idealistic as she wants. What she can't do is play Dance Monkey. I'm not going to play it. As I've tried to explain to her, she's not going to win the battle to find a legitimate reason to leave me. <laughs> if she wants to leave me, she's going to have to choose to leave me. She can't play. I don't have any choices. The, I just moved by everything else in the world. No, we've got great signs. That's the other thing is Okay, well, I don't use those parent-child terms because they're confusing metaphors that mislead us, but um, it is absolutely the case that I cannot tolerate third slot FE um, attacks, but that's not what happened last night at all. Uh, Play Dance Monkey. Here's how you kill a relationship. Keep telling your partner, ah, I'm not sure. Maybe in the future you're going to be like this and that's going to destroy the relationship. Dance Monkey, convince me I'm wrong. That's... Yeah, some people do actually care about astrology when it comes to actually important and serious things. Is that ridiculous? Yes, I think so too. I think it's absolutely fucking ridiculous to prioritize some astrological conclusions over the data right in front of your face. Right? What's the data right in front of her face? This actual relationship. What's the data she's freaking out about? Generalized relations, generalized relationship information. I mean, I don't I don't agree with that. She's still sleeping. That's why I'm live streaming. I went in, tried to get her to see if she was awake so I could chat with her about it directly, but she was sleeping still, and that's part of the problem. She plays Dance Monkey before bed, gets me, me and my emotions all worked up, then she takes her sleeping pills and crashes out all night. Meanwhile, I can't sleep properly. I'm tossing and turning and upset, and I can't talk to her until she wakes up, you know? So I end up live streaming to get it out of my system. I'm upset, you know? Well, she was, Kimberly was a, a, a toxic nightmare for me. Not for everybody in the world, but for me, she was. Um, just, uh, it's like, it, 
I don't really think she was doing it intentionally. If she had been, she would have been absolutely wicked, but um, I just think she was just really damaged, you know? Um, Rachel's not nearly so damaged, but the, the, the problem is it takes a lot less for Rachel and I to do damage because we're both so intuitive and we both know better, right? So Rachel knows better than this. And she's giving in to, I don't know what, her fear, her maybe she's not feeling quite herself or something. I'm not sure. But um, because we're both so intuitive, we accept the fact that we both have to accept all the inferences from everything we say. And it means that we have to speak correctly. Uh, loyalty check? I mean... If this is for me right now. I'm doing a loyalty check. You know, I'm making sure that we come out of this with her speaking the right words, which are my words, not hers. Does Rachel have attention deficit disorder? Not remotely. Nothing of the sort. No, not even close. I have attention deficit disorder. Mom, I understand that happens. I'm saying it's unacceptable for her to turn her and I into my requirement to dance for her, which is what she likes to do. I have an NI fear. Right. Well, she wants me to reassure her. She wants me to reassure her that this future that she's imagining isn't going to happen. I don't want to play dance monkey. I need to take you for granted that you're all in, in the boat, not going to get out of the boat, not going to question whether or not you should be in the boat. I don't know what spiraling into the saviors means. This is not an any temper tantrum. This is a FI tantrum. I expect her to protect my FI. When she calls into question the long-term viability of the relationship, she makes me feel like I'm on unstable ground. And that needs to stop because I don't do that to her. I don't say to her, mm, gosh, Trisha, I don't know. This quality of you makes me wonder if we're really going to work out long-term and then make her dance. Go, Oh, yes, we will, Eric. Yes, we will. We're going to be fine. I don't do that kind of stupid shit to her ever. Nobody needs to check my loyalty. No. Uh -uh. I'm not going to coddle and encourage her bad behavior. If she doubts whether or not I'm trustworthy, she can go fuck herself. Her job is to trust me, period. End of discussion. Well, she, she says that's the thing. She she's she wa she wavers on it. I'm very clear. I, I have two states of being. As I said from the very beginning, in every relationship, nobody seems to understand how to be in a proper fucking relationship except for me. Nobody seems to understand this, but there are two states of being in any relationship: all in or all out. That's it. And I need her all in or all out. That's it. Now, we've talked about you plenty, Blue Nowhere. Actually, we've quoted your thing. We talked about it back and forth. It's causing a problem. For example, Rachel's like, maybe Blue Nowhere is right. That's part of this problem, actually, Blue Nowhere. So, yes, we do listen to you too much. Not too little, too much. Your stupid, shitty words are a negative impact on our relationship. So, no, it's not that we don't listen to you. It's that she does. 
I don't listen to you because you're fucking stupid. She was born in 85. She's 35. Well, then it's time for them to change. Step up. Time for them to step up, right? Or get my foot up their ass, period. And Rachel's getting my foot up her ass right now. And she will every time she starts to pull this bullshit. I'm done with it. You know, the thing is this. When I enter into a relationship, I say to the other person, here's what you get. And then I deliver that. Everybody else needs to do the same. Period. Yeah, you know where I get it. You'd love to see me break up with Rachel. And it's just because you care about me, right? Okay. I don't want to let her alone. So then I don't want to just like, okay, well, just leave Rachel alone and be fine. No, she has work she needs to do. She gets to play Dance Monkey now. And she wants me to play Dance Monkey, she can play Dance Monkey. The only thing that people ever understand is, seems like a taste of their own medicine. That they get. Oh, now I understand. I don't like it when you make me feel this way. Maybe I shouldn't do that to you. They don't, they usually don't even understand then. Kimberly never understood. I, but see, that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not willing to drop to that level, right? But that that's the problem. Is every time I try to do that, I start to do that and I realize this isn't gonna work. This other person is less actualized than me. Which means they respond to every attack with attack. It's like actualization is being more Christ-like, basically. You know? That's actualization, being more Christ-like. Recognizing that Rachel is not actually hurting me. She's expressing her own hurt. And it's not about me, right? Understanding that truth and letting that truth define the situation, that's being actualized and Christ-like. But I'm not always like that, you know? I'm pissed. I don't want to be like that. No, because she it's it's ignoring any is what she's doing. She's saying, I saw one thing, maybe uh, what happened was I was watching this show yesterday and she wasn't really that interested in called uh the, the Curse of Oak Island. It's a show I like to watch. It's, they're looking for treasure. It's like a documentary kind of. It's like a history channel reality show. Um, anyway, there's this blonde chick on it who works for the drilling company. And there was one scene where she was describing how they were going to drill it. And it sounded super sexual. And so I was kind of smiling about it in a, in a like... Manner, I guess, it expressed some, some 
interest in the girl, I guess. I, and she accused me of like thinking that chick was hot, and that's what started this whole thing. That wasn't even what I was thinking of. I was just thought it was funny the way you know I'm talking about like Justin so good. She's not that hot either. She looks hotter at first before you see her up close, and she's not really that hot. But she's good looking, you know. She's fine looking. She's okay. But regardless, when she was describing the drilling process one time, she was using all this very sexual language, and it made me laugh, you know. And so then Rachel's like, "You like her, don't you?" And she's also guess who else Rachel is jealous about? And the video of Richard Dawson that I made. I put a lot of pictures of Diana Doors, this 1950s blonde bombshell that Richard Dawson went out with. Now, it is true that I thought she was attractive, but it's also true that the main reason I include so many pictures is there's shit tons of gorgeous big black and white pictures of Diana Doors. More, many more pictures of her than of Richard Dawson that are of high quality anyway. Um, so that's mostly why I included so many nice pictures of Diana Doors. I figure, yeah, it's nice to look at. It's a good video making decision. Now, she thinks I've got some sort of crush on this dead English lady from the 1950s, and that that's an indication that somehow I can't be trusted or I'm going to make her feel jealous all the time? Come the fuck on. You've got to be kidding me. That's any ignoring, right? If there are other possibilities, then I'm just obsessed with this chick. I, look, that's not what I want to hear, okay? That's not what I want to hear at all, Lane Justice. She is, she does have a mental illness, okay, first of all. So, generally, we want to probably avoid saying she sounds loony. But, uh, Blue Nowhere, we think you're an ISTJ as well, by the way. Which is why you have such poor FE. And this morning, I decided to punish you for your poor F.E., which was not fair of me. And I'm sorry. Um, maybe we can. I just... I mean, I try to give her as much F SC as I can, you know. Um, I need to pull this ball. This is the thing. This is the other thing that people maybe don't fully always get, is that I really didn't want to do this live stream right now. I wanted to talk to Rachel about it directly and get this thing resolved without me venting about it online. Um, but I couldn't because she's still asleep. And I'd already waited long enough. You know, it's like I can't. I mean, she's not leaving me. She's not mad. I'm mad. She's expressing ridiculous fears and drawing ridiculous conclusions from them. <laughs> oh, it did, Blue Nowhere. Believe me, it did. Rachel's very... Uh, very... Intuitive, you know, she picks up on everybody's meow. And so uh, she's, you know, if you've said something mean about her, she's probably read it. <laughs> she's probably aware of it. And I might hear about it too. Your ex is ultra sensitive and overly pr protective as well. Makes it very difficult for a healthy relationship. Well, Rachel is and is not. You know, it's like um, most of the time we're great. Uh, the last couple of days, she's, on both days, has indulged in, um, oh yeah, she encourages me to do so. 
that that's one thing that's that's so uh, I have to remember as well. You know, part of the reason why I freak out about this so much is because I have FI damage too for my last relationship. Kimberly did this to me constantly. Rachel does it to me in a much less unhealthy way, in a much more fair way, and is not really. And if I hadn't sustained all that damage about this issue already, it probably wouldn't bother me that much. Blue Nowhere, that's good advice, except I would say uh, the challenge I have there is um, only sometimes is it the case that when she's being, you know, only sometimes are those behaviors linked to a, uh, a mental breakdown. I'm not sure if this is an instance like that or not. That's one of my challenges as well is um, she does have within her perspective range of behaviors, behaviors that I ought to go, okay, this isn't Rachel. But I don't think that's what happened last night. I think we're, she was just indulging in what I call catastrophizing. She finds some little thing that she thinks might become a problem. No. She can't talk about any actual problems because we don't have any. This is the thing that bothers me, right? We don't have any real problems. And so sometimes she, she just decides to create them. Note, she's not really pushing back on me about this at all. She, when I say, Rachel, this is what you're doing. She goes, I'm sorry. I know I'm doing that and stuff. And, Well, yeah, I can't get Christmas or for you. I understand that. But remember, I'm a I'm a person too. I'm a human being too. Just because I understand ultimately, um Okay, well the privacy thing is out, out not even on the table remotely. Not even remotely on the table. Yeah, yeah, we've we've got her on. Uh, she's got we've got a private psychiatrist, and he's prescribed her different drugs than she's done before. And you know, look of the two strategies. You know, yeah, we'll see. We'll see him again soon. We got to get the labs into that psychiatrist. Actually, something we we'll probably do that tomorrow. Lab stuff. I got to get labs too. Yeah, and, and believe me, Jake Forrest, let me stress this to everybody. Rachel says exactly the same thing Jake Forrest just said. If you're going to date Eric, you should expect he will talk about you on the lecture. She says that, too. So, um, and, and remember, while I am, I am overreacting here, because what she was doing was expressing fears that made me feel unsafe, because it, it also resonated with me with the way that um, the way that you know my second wife would constantly move the goalposts, she'd always assign new things that were problems for me to work on, and then when I when I actually accomplished the thing, it would just be time for a new problem. It would never fix things, you know. Ah. <coughs> oh. What the fuck was that? Ew. God damn it. This is 
great, huh? Scorch. <laughs> Yeah, everything's right. Rachel pissed me off. Everything's all right. See, the bottom line is, I'm I keep wanting to um, be able to at some point completely relax and take her and the relationship for granted, and that means that sometimes I'll be like I was yesterday because I was feeling hurt feelings from the night before when she had done the same thing again. Um, I wasn't paying a lot of attention to her. I was watching this show on TV and she was having feelings and I guess, I don't know, maybe I wasn't being responsive to them or whatever. But that's called taking the relationship for granted. You need to be both. Every healthy relationship allows both parties to take the relationship for granted. To know that they can pay no attention to it whatsoever and it'd be fine. That's a healthy relationship. So Rachel needs to learn to take me for granted and let me take her for granted. Because if she, if every time I take her for granted, she pulls the rug out from under me, we're going to have a serious fucking problem. I thought, okay, you're good. You're good. We've got, we're, we're fine now. I can relax. Okay, now I'm going to focus on this other thing. Hey! Me! Let me make some problems. No. Fuck off. That's not happening. We're not playing that game. I cannot be any more reassuring, Paige Katarina. There's no way, possible way in the world that anybody can be more reassuring than me. I have said my words, right? My words mean things. The words I have said it are include words such as, you don't need to worry about that shit ever. I am, I am exactly trustworthy, perfectly. I, the reason that you don't have anything real to complain about is because I don't do things wrong. I treat you right all the time. I'm a good relationship partner. Probably the best one in the fucking world, frankly. So I need you to be happy. Right? That's, that's your job. I do everything right. And you be happy. No, she agrees. No, she agrees, E3 Zombie. She agrees that I do everything right and that I'm not causing any problems. She's not disagreeing with any of that stuff. That's why she's not... She's not accusing me of doing anything wrong. Because I haven't done anything wrong. She's accusing me of being likely to do something wrong in the future. What? This whole incident started when I was watching this show called The Curse of Oak Island on TV. <laughs> well, that's part of the reason why I was annoyed, too, is, you know, um, I was hoping to get my hump on yesterday, and before we could settle into evening, get my hump on time and, you know, whatever, I I was watching this show and she thought I was attracted to one of the women in the show and that's what started the whole fucking thing. We have a lot of sex up in place 48.
Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not, I don't need her to be happy. I need her to be not dissatisfied, not finding problems. You know, focusing on the fact that, wow, this is amazing. No, I, if, but if she, the woman on the show wasn't even a celebrity. She was this woman who worked for a drilling company in this history show, reality show called Curse of Oak Island, where they're searching for treasure and stuff. What I want her to be is not, not creating and admiring problems. I don't like problem admiration or problem creation. We don't have any real problems. So if we're fighting, 99% chance she has created a fight out of nothing. I don't do that. So she can't either. It's just being fair. Thanks. This is from the uh, middle school. Middle school national debate tournament. In Overland Park, Kansas, 2014. That's what this part says here. No, I don't think she, I don't, I'm not worried. I don't think she's worried about that. <laughs> Come on, gear. Um, even if we lived in a country where there was men only, I don't think she would worry about me turning gay. Well, that's the thing with this mom. She doesn't need to have, that's the other thing. She was concerned last night all of a sudden about how well, she didn't have very much money in her bank account. Well, she actually has more than she's had ever since we've been together right now than she's ever had before. But she sort of thought she was going to end up with more after the um, after the stimulus check. And and I was like, well, what do you need? What, what are you talking about? And basically, what came out was, well, she needs to feel secure that she... Uh, she has the financial ability to get away if she needs to, so to speak. It's like, what? Why are you making contingency plans for if this relationship doesn't work out? I've explained to you before. This is a boat. You get in the boat or and you stay in the boat. Every time you get out of the boat, I have to jump into the water and swim after you and chase you and bring you back into the boat. Do not make me do your work. We both, our job, each of our job is to firmly decide to be in the boat. Okay, that's our job. Both of our jobs is to not ever jump out of the boat except for one time when we jump out of the boat forever. That's how you break up with people, right? You're in the boat until you break up with them and then you're out of the boat. You don't play in and out of the boat, okay? That's not acceptable. If I get out of the boat, that means we're done. I don't play in and out of the boat. I respect the boat. That's not a good reason to jump into shark infested waters, Lane Justice, and force me to pull her out of them. It doesn't matter how seasick she gets. It's like, be sensible. Even if you are seasick, that's better than jumping in the open ocean and expecting somehow that to turn out well. It's not like there's another boat she's planning on jumping onto. Not even the boat she jumped onto this one from. That boat's left. She can't really go live where she used to live. Her brother basically kicked her out of the house. So maybe she should think about alternatives, too. Like, is this a preferable alternative to every other alternative that I've ever had? 
Yes, it is. So embrace it and don't fuck with it. Do not kill it. Do not shit on me. And yes, playing in and out of the boat is shitting on me. No, I'm saying, look, if it turns out that it, it, it's, it's, it's this, it's being on a team, right? I got drafted by the Dodgers. Um, and it turns out they're a really shitty team. And I played for them for a season. And I don't like to be on this team. I don't want to be on such a shitty team. That's not a reason to stop playing. That's not a reason to share information with the Padres because you hope next year you're going to be on the Padres or something. You play out the season and you be a good teammate no matter what until you have an opportunity or decide to exit the relationship. Maybe at the end of the season you say, you know what, this didn't work out, I'm leaving. And then you do leave. Yeah, I love her. I love the fuck out of her. She's great. That's why it's painful. Right? It weren't, it would, I mean, as quick an answer as I could possibly give you, Lane, just says, yes, absolutely, I love her. We're incredibly compatible. Shockingly so. Like, you know, on so many levels, we have great conversations. It's a wonderful relationship which is why I need to be allowed to relax and enjoy it and feel comfortable and safe. And she can't constantly be making me feel unsafe every time she realizes, oh shit, I love the fuck out of Eric and that makes us dangerous. You know? Yeah, I mean, I it, look, just because I'm upset at somebody... I'm not talking about those statuses. Those statuses for me don't change. You know? I maintain my, my language about that regardless of how my feelings change in the moment. Because I understand that things like love are not feelings, they're behaviors. You know, to love somebody is to recognize their value and to hold them dear and precious to you. I absolutely have that for Rachel. But to love somebody really properly means to recognize that your feelings don't matter. That your feelings change from moment to moment. That that's not part of it. The only way that it's relevant, feelings to love, is the other person makes you feel bad often, then the more you love them, the more it's going to hurt. So you should leave. They make you feel bad too often, right? Um, but but you know your feelings in the moment don't matter. It's hugely important that we reject our feelings in the moment when it comes to evaluating statuses that are important. Yeah, I know. I guess I am just venting because it's like, I can't believe it's happening to me again. Why is this every fucking relationship? Right. Cloud Gear's right, Ron Solo. Yeah, and that's that's very much in the range of my relationship. Can Can Krishna Star Magoo is uh you know I would say it's better than that even. It's it's more than eighty percent, you know. Uh positive but the problem is the more positive it gets the more the more in love I am quote unquote I don't want to change Rachel I actually don't want to change her I'm th and this is important Kyle I'm glad you brought that up there's a huge difference and it's important to recognize the fact that there are two kinds of critiques there are behavioral critiques and ontological critiques behavioral critiques are good and appropriate when appropriate and ontological critiques are always wrong and so what Cloud is, Cloud is half right. You know, he says, you should never want to change the person you love. That's true. Or change fundamental things about them or how they are or whatever. That's true. 
However, specific behaviors that are unacceptable behaviors from one party to another in a relationship should be addressed directly and extinguished. And that's true also. We will laugh for sure. Um, and we will. We will stay together for sure. Because, you know, it's like, and the thing is, Rachel is fair in these conversations. It's not like she's insisting that she's right to be doing this or refusing to answer questions or, or trying to muddle shit or whatever. She's fair. Zizek's an idiot. Zizek is a classic, classic idiot. He's the, the, the classic, incredibly stupid, incredibly smart person. He's, he's the textbook example of it, Zizek. So smart, he's a complete moron. So, Claude, one thing you're going to have to learn about relationships is to distinguish between behavioral critiques and ontological critiques. Because if you don't make behavioral critiques in a relationship, it's doomed to fail. You have to put boundaries. And they have to be fair. They have to be reciprocal for both parties. So this is something you're going to have to learn about relationships. We got to talk about an Indian girl you talked to and she went crazy because you left her. Yeah, he's such a genius moron. Yeah. Funny, Winston's mom, I had to learn to not speak out loud when people weren't around. I still speak out loud when people aren't around a lot. I like this, the feel of words in my mouth and the sound of them in my ears. That's why I talk out loud, even people on the road. <coughs> well, it's true, Cloud. You shouldn't go seeking boundaries. You're, again, half right. You shouldn't go seeking boundaries, but it is true that you should respect your own authentic boundaries and express them clearly to the person using words well. So this is something you're going to have to work on in a relationship. Um, you're right and wrong, Cloud. Was I completely correct there or only half right <laughs> no you make two statements cloud you said if you seek boundaries you aren't made for each other and you said love is boundless those are two separate statements the first is a conditional statement and the second is a statement so you can certainly be half right because you made Two statements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Jizek's a coke addict. That's that's the other thing to think about to note about Jizek. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're completely wrong, then, Glob. If you say one thing that's wrong, all of the things you say become wrong. It's like an apple in a barrel. It's like a spoiled apple in a barrel, apparently. Um, <clears throat> you can't PM here. It's not possible to PM here. You've got to uh, PM by some other modality. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, his first statement was if then. His second statement didn't have any statement factor.
Well, here's the thing, Cloud. Saying things like love is boundless or whatever. No, she's sleeping. That's why I'm venting on the internet. Rather than talking to her about it. Kick her out? I'm not going to kick her out. What, what are you talking about? This is not... Look, just because the title of this video is How to Kill a Relationship doesn't mean this relationship is actually under risk of being killed. It just means that um, she's engaged in behavior I don't like and she needs to stop it. That's it. Right? It's very simple. That's the thing. Is I am not asking anything difficult or complicated. I'm saying stop doing this. No, she didn't go crazy. She is saying things like, um, she is saying things like, I'm concerned, Eric, that you're gonna you're gonna check out chicks, and I'm gonna be jealous, and so maybe this isn't a long term viable relationship. It's that last part that's the problem, right? Yeah, she tells me she loves me so much all the time. Yes, all the time. We're, we're extremely gaffed with each other. Well, what she does is she imposes in universalist considerations or concerns onto our relationship. Well, I read in an article that um, men who who look at the butts of other women when they're driving around or, or dogs. And I saw just saw you look at the butt of another woman, and therefore you're one of those people. She's not getting up on the drama either. Um, it, it's not like that. One of the nice things about these live streams is, as I, as I said to late Rachel the other day, people come in and they all voice their various opinions. It's, a, it's the perfect therapist. And the reason it's the perfect therapist is because somebody will say something worthwhile that I'll grab onto and go, okay, yes, now that's helpful and that's useful information. And those who are wrong and say things that are wrong, I will argue against them and that'll help refine my position as well. Okay, well, you're not an ESTJ? Okay. Um, well, you also didn't pay me, right? Uh, I'm trying to follow this M A B then Q. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, you emailed me. Okay. Well, then you have my PayPal address. All right, I'll take my email. Oh, then you don't have my email address. Let me put in my email address. So yeah, I'm frustrated. You do call-ins? Yeah, sure, I do call-ins. But I don't have my phone with me right now. If both Spacey and I independently typed you as ESTJ, you are an ESTJ. Um, So, uh, hi, Lantern Ask. I'm feeling 
feely now. I don't like feeling feely. Um, I feel mad when people make me feel feelings that I shouldn't have to feel. ESCJs normally don't get typed. They're uncommon in the typology community. It's a tough, tough answer to a tough question to answer as a consequence. But there are some of them. So, uh, anyway, I'm feeling feelings. And I don't like feeling feelings. And I want to go inside. And it's like, this is a problem with relationships in part. One of the things that can make them risky a little bit is uh, when your partner hurts you in some way, if, if the relationship is healthy, then that partner ends up comforting you as well and apologizing and you guys make up and everything's good again because you there's a re-stitching of trust. But part of the, the risk of that is there's a very unhealthy manifestation of that where there's a sort of repeated process of, of hurting for the purpose of initiating that, that emotional intimacy of reconnecting. Now, that's not okay, right? You can't get in this habit of intentionally or, or subconsciously or whatever hurting the other person to initiate this emotional intimacy process of re recoming together or you've got a very sick kind of a relationship indeed, right? I want to make sure that doesn't happen. But at the same time, I'm also seeking the comfort from my partner that I normally would seek and want in the circumstance. She's hurt my feelings again. I don't like having my feelings hurt. She needs to stop hurting my feelings, right? It's really that simple. So now I want her to go in and reassure me, right? And unhurt my feelings, so to speak. But then I'm also concerned that I'm that thing's happening there where... Um, I'm providing a lot of emotional intimacy now, and it's almost like a reward for hurting me. So that's a concern or a consideration as well. My girlfriend's name is Rachel. And she's a wonderful girlfriend and a fantastic human being. And unfortunately, I sleep right now, so I can't talk to her directly about this. Not that I necessarily want to either. It often helps me a lot to talk it out ahead of time on the internet. Because it makes me less angry when I go in and deal with it. Um, yeah, she said that she's worried that I'm going to check out other girls and that she can't trust me around other women and that she's going to feel jealous and that she therefore she's worried about the viability of the relationship long term. Uh, I say things like, have I done anything here? Did I do something wrong? No, there's not anything I've done wrong. This is just her knowing how things are going to be. I'm not getting credit for being... Um, yeah, my second wife was very emotionally stable. No, she, Kim wasn't either. Her, Kim, well, Kim wasn't emotionally stable. Rachel's actually pretty stable most of the time, but I guess that's not really a meaningful definition of stability because this is obviously some volatility is implied by that. Uh, no, she just, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Um, old bad habits, I think. You know, she's, NI DOMs are impacted a lot by their experiences, just as SI users are. The difference is that NI DOMs don't see so clearly how their own experiences are informing their intuition because they're using their intuition within the frame of experience without knowing it. So it's like, Rachel's, there's a reason why Rachel's looking for reasons to believe this won't work. And it's because she's desperately concerned about investing too much value into me, too much love into me, too much importance into the relationship, and then me have, have me pull the rug out from under. I keep explaining to her, that's not going to happen. And the other thing I keep telling her is this, very important and true as well. 
when her words, when her when her intuition is in direct conflict with my words, that means she is wrong and she needs to adopt my words. Because I, it's like it rarely happens. When it does, she's creating problems. And then in that circumstance, she needs to listen to my words so the problems go away. And that's just it. Time and time again, it's proved to be the case. When her intuition disagrees with my words, that means she needs to listen to my words. My words can be relied upon. I, you can trust my words. See, Rachel's never been with anybody whose words she could trust before. Yeah, she was reading some bullshit on the internet, too. I don't ask. Yes, she was. That's, that's the kind of shit that happens. She looks at the outside sources for whether or not this relationship is going to work, rather than looking at the data that's right in front of her fucking face. You know? <laughs> yes, she loves me a lot. She's she's very much in love with me. And, and me with her. We have a... We are deeply, that's why it hurts so much when she does this shit to me. Because I'm human too. And even though she, I shouldn't logically, I shouldn't conclude from her saying those things what I conclude. Which is, she's not really all in the relationship. What I should conclude is, um, she's so in the relationship that it's absolutely terrifying her to death. But, uh, you know, I'm a regular person too. I've got my own insecurities and shit. And no, that's not it either, the generalist. That's not it either. In fact, sometimes she gets angry at the the forever language because she feels like it's cutting off her NI or something, I guess. There's a woodpecker pecking my cock right now, too. Nicholas Shea. <laughs> we got woodpeckers around here. They peck on that telephone pole. They peck on these trees and stuff. Is anyone even listening to Eric at this point, lol? What, we're on solo? You know? Yeah, look, we are talking about getting married, for sure. I have no problem with getting married. I'm not, I'm not worried about getting married. I, I'm not... Everybody's trying to solve this problem in some way other than what I'm saying, right? Yes, she's got spe specific space to just be alone. We've got two different spaces here. We've got inside the master bedroom and bath, and we've got out here in the nest. Right now, I'm out here. She's in there. Sometimes we switch, you know? But... uh We've been together now seven months. Okay, when I used to like an ENTP, if he is, if he was born, I couldn't see anything objective. When I started watching you, then I started realizing ENTPs can be good people. Well, thanks, Lantern Ask. Yeah, I don't think she's in objective mode either, and I think she's battling. This is the thing. I'm not being very compassionate here. Um, Swift, I believe I'm an INFJ, and if I'm an INFJ, I don't want to be because being an INFJ is pretty useless and painful. Everyone else has, has it easier. I mean, I understand INFJs. That's the thing. Um, I genuinely understand them, and I get how difficult it can be to be that intuitive as a knower. It's like you're always trying to maneuver things without doing things. <laughs> it's weird. 
but delightful. You know, I love INFJs. I, I love the hell out of Rachel. I can't get enough of Rachel. You know, this is part of the problem. It's like I'm very, I'm very much most comfortable operating as a two person team. And I like that. To, I, that's what I need to know is stable and unchanging is that we're together and meh, meh, meh. So I don't like, thanks for Deagle, you're the best. I don't like it when she makes me feel as though I can't rely on this relationship always being the same and staying there and stuff. When she says things to make me think that she's not all in the boat, um, that makes me uncomfortable. I would like to be more compassionate about it. I would like to not try to like use meow, 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 meow to get her to meow, but you know, she hurts my feelings. I don't like having my feelings hurt. That's what it boils down to. I really don't like it when she hurts my feelings. Most people really can't hurt my feelings much. It takes, you know, you got to be close. You got to be inner circle to be able to hurt my feelings. And <sighs> yeah, Nicholas Watson. It's good advice. I know better, but I'm not a knower. See, I'm an actor. So when she knows us into into butt fuckery, then I act I act out against it. You know, he had to be an ENFJ. Not that often. Not often. And mostly, the way she hurts my feelings is by suggesting that in some fashion, she's not the right person for me. Which I interpret as meaning she doesn't want me. And she doesn't love me. And that's how she hurts my feelings. Um, Hitler was an INFJ on meth. Remember, remember that part, though. <coughs> Rachel's an INFJ who's on craziness minimizers, not craziness maximizers. Well, Cloud, I would typically agree with you, except for the meth component. I think Hitler was an INFJ on meth. <sighs> I know, Lantern Ask, I know. She's literally telling me she doesn't think she's worthy or something. But as I keep explaining to her, I will always interpret that the opposite way as her trying to nicely let me down because I'm not good enough for her. Because I'm FI polar and I rely on other people to tell me that I have value and make me feel like I have value. And that's what she's supposed to be doing. And when she tells me that she might not think that this is the right relationship for me, I'm never going to interpret it as anything other than her saying she doesn't want me and she doesn't love me. It doesn't matter what words she uses because I'm always going to intuit that the other person is going to try to be nice to me and let me down easy. And so they're always going to try to be like, well, this is FI shit, Lantern asks. It doesn't count as real. So it, it has its own metric, you know? She's supposed to make, this is FI land. That's what her job is, is to take care of my FI and to make sure my FI is safe. And when she, when my FI doesn't feel safe, then um, I get very fussy. Cloud's digging into the pro provocation bag. Let's see what I can pull out here to provoke. 
when you were younger, how often did you argue with people who practice Christianity? <laughs> a whole lot. <laughs> I used to be. When I was a teenager, I was a bit of an argue atheist. I mean, I got over atheism as an argument pretty quick. I found it boring by the time I was in college. But as a teenager, I was, I was, uh, I was one of those atheists. Yeah. Now, of course, I'm a Christian. <laughs> So it just goes to show you, I guess, something. generalist it is the case the last couple of days we have had um non-aligning sleep patterns so that uh so that like i'm taking a nap she's up then i get up she takes a nap and and so we've been kind of like off kilter schedule wise with each other, which, um, you know, when I'm in a relationship, I expect to be a teammate. I expect to be part of a two person team that's mostly rolling as such all the time. You know, um, it doesn't mean I can't give Rachel her space and time. It's just that I need to know that when we, we do separate and we come back together, then we're both happy to see each other and everything good. Not that something's changed because. I haven't been keeping the balls in the air the whole time. I wonder. I, I should check our biorhythm thing and see what we're at right now. Because yesterday and the day before, we were off. It's true in terms of our rhythms. And usually, we're, we're on in terms of our rhythms. So, it may be that it was... <laughs> numlock god damn it numlock I say Let me see. I'm going to go back a couple of days. Hmm. Yeah, we are in a part where we're more separate than usual. That's true. We're going to be coming together again on the 11th and well physical yeah we're off somewhat we come back to the zero at on the 10th for physical compatibility emotional compatibility right now We're pretty good. We're less than. We're at point minus point one. And we've got such good compatibility anyway. We've got. Okay. We've got physical and emotional compatibility of over 99 and intellectual compatibility of 95.95. Um, <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking compatible, you know? It's really crazy. It's, it's so fun and interesting that there's this random thing on the internet called biorhythm. I've never put any credence into biorhythms before at all. There's no reason at all, it would seem to me, why one's rhythms 
would link to one's birth date like that. Really, but I, I gotta say, it's so true. We are really, we really are more compatible physically and emotionally a little bit than intellectually. But we're quite compatible intellectually as well. It's, it's really, yeah. I'll share a link for it. I mean, because we're both intuitives. That's that's basically what it boils down to. Is we're both intuitives. So here's a link to the, the uh, biorhythm compatibility calculator. Now, look, I don't. I, I'm not saying that. I I don't know what to think of this. Okay, I do know the following. I can put in just about any two birthdays. In fact, I can put in any two birthdays that are different from each other in that calculator, and I've yet to come up with any two parties, any two birthdays that have as high a mean compatibility as me and Rachel. We are off the charts compatible according to this thing. Even if it's completely random, like, why? Are, wow, I got really lucky at this completely random thing, you know? Um, it, it's, it's weird. Eric... Because that's an unexplainable NI truth for you. You can't satisfactorily explain it, but it comes out always true. Well, it, that's okay. <laughs> You're going to have to extract that second half of that sentence. NI is frequently enough wrong because it's only right within its frame and it chooses the wrong frame. And that is why even if NI is always comes out true, it often can be catastrophically wrong because it's in the wrong frame. And he's better at frame management, frankly, from what I can tell. Would you have disregarded the virus and chart if I had told if it had told you you were incredible? Yes, of course. <laughs> I think he was wrong too, Winston's mom. Right, because see, Justine Doucette, I don't put any weight in those sort of things. I don't think any of the reasons why Rachel and I are compatible have anything to do with anything external that we have all the data we need right in front of us, our actual experiences with each other. Because I'm an SI user. So I don't place any weight in that shit. Now, being an SI user and having an SI approach to knowing is the right kind of knowing for something like a relationship in general. Because you can tell with your actual experiences whether you're happy or not, whether you're meow or meow. No, it thinks it's with outside of frames. Can't can Krishna Star Purdue? It's always within a frame that it's ignoring. Um <laughs> So, look, the thing is, NI mostly is not about making predictions. It's about, it's about coalescence, you know? So, note no, when I asked Rachel to define NI for me one time, out of the blue. She said, she thought about it for a second, she said, internal knowing. And I was like, okay. Now that's an NI answer to an, a question, you know? So NI is coalescence. Is it, is it true that that's correct, that that answer is correct? Yes, it's also true that it's incomplete and lots of other things. So is it always right? Well, yes, within its frame. If you're looking for a singular answer, then that's the best answer you can give, probably. This is a fully coalesced answer. This is what I mean by framing. Yeah, it's ignoring the frame, which is saying, it, it. you ask, I ask Rachel that question. She doesn't do what an INTP might do or an ENTP might do, which is question the question. Well, what's the, for what purpose do you want this definition? How, what kind of definition do you want? Or anything like that. She's not going to, she's not going to ask that kind of question, right? 
So it's important to remember that introverted intuition is a received process, which is to say it comes out fully formed rather than a deliberative process, something that you engage in willfully over, it takes time. Okay, well, look, let me share the link to this, my current book that I'm developing, the, the current the state, the current state of, of affairs with the, with the explanations of things, okay? So, uh, I, what was it called? That's a figuring out and down and down and down and down and down and down. I don't want to be in this experimental film. All right, so this is what I'm currently uh, trying to, yeah, you know. Um, Okay, well, that's because Ken Ken Kirsten started with Google Yarn and I don't. I also think myself much more deft with NI than I probably am. I think the opening exercise of this book is worth doing, and it shows a lot about personality. It's a good way to get you to, um, to get you to understand how. Like clouds, do the exercise at the be the beginning of the next book, at the beginning of the link I just put there. Look at that that first page without before you go to the second page. Look at the first page. Consider the claim for two hundred two minutes before proceeding to the next page. Claims every person has a personality. Think about that for a couple of minutes. Then proceed to the next page and read it, and you'll learn something. I'm gonna go see if Rachel's awake. If she is, I'm gonna end this time. If she's not, I'm gonna continue streaming. She's still asleep. I behave as if my words are absolute laws. My words are like gravity, Cloud. My words are like time and space. My words are like life itself, a fundamental building block of the universe. Take my words onto thee, Cloud. Encapsulate them in your body. Sup upon them. Suckle from their bosom. These words will give it unto you the milk of truth through your parted lips, your tongue gently tonguing. Clouds in his happy. Okay, cool. So you thought something else.
Okay. Well, that's interesting. You can you feel free to continue reading if you like. I know I don't treat what I say as law. I treat what I say as meaningful. And that if you're going to dispute it, then I'm going to require you to be meaningful as well. That's it. Our first and third slots static, second and fourth dynamic. First and third, third slots function as absolute values, and the second and fourth function as instrumental values is an accurate description of it. I don't think either of them is accurately described as static or dynamic exactly, but I'd have to think about that more. Uh, and not something that, not a question that I've addressed directly before. So it's a good question. I appreciate it. And, uh, Okay, well, to be more precise, it would seem that the fourth is absolute in half of its aspect. So uh, that, and the same with the fifth, that the the half of the aspect that is opposite the dominant is absolute, and the half of the aspect that is consistent with the dominant is instrumental, and the flip for the fifth. If you, but I don't, I mean, I don't really want to go into all those mechanics per se properly uh, right now because it's complicated. Okay, so rational and irrational functions are, that's not a good distinction to make between functions because rational means reason based or, um, And I, mean, I just don't, I don't understand. Okay, you have to define them for me. I don't understand what the purpose of defining them as rational and irrational is. What does it mean to say that they're irrational? Is it that uh, they're not reason-based? Well, they're not deconstructible. They're holistic. You're starting to, you know, uh, why not just say, are you saying, hey, I don't know. I'm not sure what's the point of that rational and irrational. How was it, was it your birthday? It was my birthday on uh, the 27th of April. It's no longer my birthday. though. Oh, that's right. That reminds me. I got a package I haven't opened yet. Uh, from Winston's model, I got the final package. So let's see what it is. Let's find out. Thank you, Hambone. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, Hambone, look who's here. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks, Ken Ken, Chris, and Farmer for doing Oh, how fun! Look how much fun these are! Wow! This looks like a lot of fun. What's this? She got me a bag of choking hazards. Fantastic. Thank you. This is my favorite of all the presents, Winston's mom. This is by far my favorite. A bag of choking hazards. <laughs> Let's try. Oh. A bag of small parts choking hazards. Please keep away from kids, but not in use. That's true. We can play in the bathtub. <laughs> this is a weird one. Like, what is this thing? Oh, it's a fishing pole. 
But look, it's got two sleepy cats on it for some reason. <laughs> this is fun. See, look. Ooh, fun. I want to cast it. It doesn't really cast, I guess. There's no casting. This is fun, fun. Thanks, my sick mom. Look, it's a little, it's still scoopers. All scoopers. I love little scoopers. I miss Rachel and feel sad. You know? <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, Ron Solo. That's a real good way of putting it. That's not a bad idea, you know, that it's her bathtub live stream. Thank you, Mrs. Vaughn. That's a fun present. I like that present. <laughs> Let me go see if she's awake again. I just keep on checking to see if she's awake until she until it wakes her up. <laughs> Well, I think half of it is. I think the the opposite aspect, half of the dominant functions as a relief absolute value. All right, let me just see if she's awake. She is out still. I will say this. Um, she really slept well last night. Unusually well. Uh, she went to bed at like 10 o'clock. And she's been, she's got like a full 12 hours in basically. I mean, it's the wrong kind of question to ask ulterior NR. It would be a mistake to try to type people like that. You got to look at the totality of evidence. Yeah, I think she's going to wake up and hopefully a... Uh, a good mood, you know, or the right mood. I mean, the right attitude. Well, I'm not waking her ass up to talk to her. Instead, I'm venting about shit on the internet.
Well, yeah, that, that treating my words as though they were law thing, that's what Kimberly used to call being the gauge of all knowing. She, one day she said to me, she stomped her foot, and she said, you're not the gauge of all knowing. And I'm like, wow, that's a great turn of phrase. Good job, Kimberly. <laughs> what a great turn of phrase. Uh, excellent work. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it means to be fair, right? And to care about what matters. At that moment, whatever it is we were fighting about didn't matter. But what does matter is that great expression came out. Because that's going to last, right? That's lasted to this day. I still think about it. I still say, that's a great expression. Um, whereas whatever it is we were fighting about at the time, who fucking remembers? I have no idea. You know? It doesn't matter. I'm not even with that person anymore. But but words matter, right? Like words last and matter. Unlike stupid shit like feelings. Feelings come and go during the course of the day. Right now, I'm feeling like very much like I want I want I need love from Rachel. Like I need to go and love her. I need she her to love me. And I need us to be hugging each other and saying I love you and stuff like that. You know, like F I tending. Um, she, she's out, dude. I, I don't want to wake her up. I, I, I respect her sleep. I don't want to wake her up. So, uh, I mean, I, I might, I might sort of want to wake her up. Like I might want to just sort to, I guess, sort of be responsible for waking her up by going in and out and keep checking on her and like going, when she's not awake to indicate that I'm irritated that she's still sleeping. But uh, I'm trying to delay doing that. That's why I'm live streaming. You know, that's exactly why I'm live streaming is so that I don't feel compelled to just wake her up so I can talk to her about all this shit. I can just spend about it on the internet and talk it all out. And as always, after I do this, I always feel a lot better. And then when I do go and um, talk to her, I'm not influenced by feeling so much. And it's much more about, you know, the good parts of humanity that are less influenced by feelings and more about uh, truth and justice and words. <laughs> I am feeling a little feelings attacky right now. I'll admit it, I'm feeling a little feelings attacky. Well, my feelings have been hurt. And that's the sort of thing that feelings do when they get hurt. They attack mindlessly. So that's what I'm doing, feelings. I'm attacking you mindlessly since you hurt. What do you think about that, feelings? Hmm? How do you like that? I got one of these for you. And I got one of these for you, feelings. How do you like that, feelings? Huh? Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I think you know what I'm saying. It is all going to be all right. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. But, you know, it's like you got to be careful with my feelings. That's the bottom line. If you are my girlfriend, I mean, I, I do that constantly, Justine Doucette. I am faithful. I am invested. I can't be a better partner. You know, it's like I am... 100% all in. I love the fucking hell out of this girl. I don't want anything in the world but her. I don't want anybody. I, I'm not interested in other women. I'm not. Blah, blah, blah. And all the evidence that any human being has to look at agrees with that. You've all you've already seen me. <clears throat> if you've been around for a while, you've already seen me persist in trying to be a good relationship partner with Kimberly. In an awful relationship where I was being actually abused. So there's no reason to doubt me at all. I am what I've always been. And not always, always, but for 30 years or something. Which is diligently trying to do relationship stuff right. And the, but see, that's a big problem, generalist. And that's one thing where I'm going to have to agree with your generalization here. Let's play. Let's. We're gonna have to get a little bit misogynist, okay? Women are never satisfied. It's a reasonable fucking um, 
generalization to make. That's the problem, right? I mean, I would say the the obvious backside SI for lots of different examples and pieces of evidence that I don't want to establish for you right now um, is the defining, the thing that tells you, okay, where it is in the stack, she's definitely NI12 somewhere in there. So, I mean, it's for lots and lots of reasons, it's fairly easy to narrow her down to ENFJ or INFJ. Uh, the challenge is the distinction there. And in that regard, um, she would seem to have more conscious problems with a lot of SI stuff than would an ENFJ, I guess you would say, uh, is one part of the thing. But most importantly, she has she has that textbook NI DOM version of SI uh, example giving memory recall the amount of memory, stuff like that. It's it's really textbook eighth slot. Uh, she's obviously SE fourth, not third. She just doesn't do enough stuff. It's, 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 it's like a long, complicated explanation like that, that. That's not really the topic right now of today's video. So, um, you know, the thing is, under some circumstances, I would say, okay, it's reasonable to come in here and say, please make a case for Rachel being an IFJ because I'm doubting it. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Um, in general, I would say make a case that Rachel's not an INFJ if you really don't think so or what you think she is because, it, you know, it's like if you wanted to, you, you're saying, you're not saying I want to negate your affirmation and you're not saying I want to make an affirmation yourself. You're saying you make an affirmation for me to negate. And that's that's an affirmation I've made over the long term with lots of different. Uh, I mean, I'm never going to be able to make that affirmation for you to negate in a way that did the straw man myself, in a sense. So what I'm saying is negate the affirmation that already exists, which is well established over countless videos or um, make your own affirmation that you've developed from observations that is distinct. Uh, I like the, I like your strategic wisdom here it's good strategy what you're doing but uh i am oh well, too smart for that i guess <clears throat> eric you're not the gauge of all knowing yeah kind of kind of i am though that's the thing for everybody else <laughs> um and for everybody else when you go, you're not the gauge of all knowing, it's probably true. For me, I kind of am the gauge of all knowing. Horse Mumbler, another person who I might say is kind of the gauge of all knowing. Uh, he might even be a little bit more gauge of all knowing than me. Uh, it's an NTP thing, maybe? I'm not sure. But it's incorrect to say, Eric, you're not the gauge of all knowing. Pretty much I am. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, not on feeling stuff. Okay, I, I can see I can see it on feeling stuff right off the bat. Okay, I'm not the gauge of all knowing about feeling stuff, but that stuff doesn't matter because it's temporary and passes and just goes. It only matters over the long haul as data points. You know, like if you if you realize somebody's making you feeling feel bad too often, too high a percentage of the time, over the long term, you have enough data to look at. Then, um, Ron Solo, no. You're only the gauge of knowing, you're only the gauge of all knowing when you agree with me. When you disagree with me, you are the gauge of all wrongness. Okay? You need to remember that. Generally, that's a very SFP thing to say. Very SFP thing to say. Look at the action of the words. I keep telling Rachel, listen to my words. My actions are not in disagreement with them. <sighs> Rachel loves me and I love Rachel and we're fine. That's what it boils down to. And I kind of regret titling this live stream in such a dramatic fashion. Except I kind of don't because we've got a lot more viewers than normal. Um, may I once again... Say thank you to Winston's mom for this large bag of small part choking hazards. 
I uh, I love it a lot. It's my favorite of all the gifts she's given me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go check and see if Rachel's awake again and see if maybe I can either discover that she is awake or accidentally wake her up checking. The monster of FI may make Rachel may make people think Rachel is some sort of NFP. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, she does have demonstrative FI. You know what? That's not a bad idea, Renny Fox. Not a bad idea. Uh, I can make her a cup of coffee. Run her a bath. I don't have to clean the bathtub. Because she made the foolish, foolish decision to shave in the bathtub. You never shave in the bathtub. You shave in the shower. But that's T.E. Polar for you. That's T.E. Polar. No, it didn't. I keep going in and checking on her, and she is out. She is E-O-T out. Well, listen, Running Fox. And, and all to all the women out there in the world, if you're going to shave, don't shave in the bathtub. That's dumb. Shave in the shower. Okay, she's way over there in the other part of the house. It's just, she can't hear me for shit. She's in the master bedroom. I'm outside in the little outhouse thing here. <laughs> EOT is how you spell out. Well, then you still you still shave in the shower, not the bathtub, because then it does a better job of rinsing all the hairs down the drain. But really, you should not shave in either. You should shave outside of the bathtub or the shower by the sink. You should shave outside in a stream near the house. But the point is, when you drain the water, it's full of hair. It doesn't drain all the hairs down. Then you have to clean up all the hairs. If you shower while you're shaving, it showers down all the hairs into the drain. Okay, so ladies out there, listen to me. You better stop it with your shaving. Right, shave over the toilet with a foot on the sink counter if you can get back there. <laughs> Shaving over the toilet's not a bad idea. Catching poems by dawn light. Hey, I I go to the barber like every couple of weeks, three weeks, maybe month, and just say two and a half all the way around. Two and a half all the way around. Um, and then that's how I get my beard shortened. When you hear about the issues with Eric from Eric's side, I find it hard to relate. <laughs> you find it hard to relate with me, to me or her? I don't really care about the shaving thing. I'm just saying that's preventing me from... Since she, put it this way. Since she shaved in the bathtub, neither of us have used the bathtub. <laughs> Because using it requires that we clean it now before we use it. What's your Enneagram KKSP? Are you an Enneagram 4 or 3? Are you an Enneagram 9 or 1? Are you an Enneagram 5, 6, 7, son? Are you an Enneagram or you KKSP? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll clean, I'll end up cleaning it. You know, I. Kinky Christian Sarnberg was a nine six something. She's a nine six meow. You think I have a different view of Rachel than you do? I love Rachel a lot. My view of her is she's great and perfect. And that at the moment, I'm overreacting to her expressing her fears. And I'm pretending as though I don't know that my most insecure interpretation of this is wrong. That's what I'm doing again. Yeah. Ah. 
what happened? Says Lara Pajickel. Uh, I got mad at Rachel because she she played in and out of the boat again with me, and I'm venting. And now I feel bad because I've I vented all of my anger out, and so I just feel sad, and I want her to be awake and stuff. But you know, you know how that goes. I'm what you might call emotionally childish. I'm emotionally childish. Is that dramatic? Were you impressed with the drama there? I was. I tell you something else. There's another big problem that's going on right now. It is a long past due for me to get some more speed. I am off my medication and uh, I've got nothing in me except just piss and vinegar and marijuana and coffee and such. And I haven't had any Adderall in me for quite a long time now. It's been weeks. I am very emo. I'm super emo. I'm a sensitive, sensitive guy, okay? That's why I get mad at Rachel, because she hurts my feelings, and I'm very sensitive. I don't like having my feelings hurt. You got M for an infinite regression. Email that threat. That's what happens when a mirror reflects a mirror. Infinite regression. Adderall is for a professional shaman. Hmm. Am I a professional shaman? Maybe you should continue to go to chemical independence. I don't like it. I mean, the thing is, I, I, I'm looking forward to having uh, amphetamine-fueled uh, creative productivity time, making music, making more work-late, laborious uh, kinds of videos and stuff. I like what it enables me to accomplish in a short amount of time, and I like the way that it directs my attention towards certain productive endeavors for a short period of time. I don't like to be on it for long stretches of time, more than a couple of weeks at a time. And, uh, you know, it's working out fine. There's a lot of running going on in my line. As I say, I'm fine. Nothing but another object between the mirrors. That's what you are in life, huh? You're nothing but an object between the mirrors. Not the ones I get prescribed by the doctor, CG. I get prescribed amphetamines called Adderall, produced by the Adderall Corporation or something like that. And they make it come in a little pill form. And it's a combination of three different kinds of amphetamines called mixed amphetamine salts. So are your french fries bland and not increasing your dopamine adequately? Sprinkle them with a little bit of mixed amphetamine salts. Weeks become months and months become years and years become lives. What are you talking about? <laughs> amphetamines? I, I, I've been doing this couple weeks on, couple weeks off thing for years now. So, no, I've not... <laughs> I'm not on amphetamine for years or months or whatever. I'm on amphetamines for weeks, and then I stay off them for weeks. Because why? It's a prescription. I run out of it, and then I have to wait for it to come through again in a month, you know, at the end of the month. Right now, I have to wait for it because the doctor won't give me more until I get my labs in. I have homework to do before I'm allowed to get my amphetamines again. Am I inattentive? I'm unproductive. I'm unproductive is what I am. Unless you consider this productive, this is what I naturally do when I'm just indulging myself and being unproductive. I come on the internet and I'm yaddy, 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 Right? And what good is that? What good is this doing me? I don't even think I have this video on monetization. My SI is like a wild horse. Okay? It's like what a question mark says. SI is like a wild horse. Dragon sleds full of gold nuggets through the Yukon in the 1840s on a blustery Christmas morn. Temperature nine, minus 50 degrees. That's what SI is like. 
I got these little hairs that grow out of this mole on the lower part of my back. And I want to burn them off with this lighter, but I'm afraid I'm going to burn myself because I can't see what I'm doing because it's on my back. You can see my problem with a bad rider. <laughs> with a one-legged rider. How does a one-legged man ride a horse? Well, he's got very special stirrups. I was saying to Rachel the other day, I'd like to get her some stirrups. <laughs> We'd love to get a gynecology share, you know, with stirrups and everything. Get them all. That'd be fantastic. I want to get one of those. I want, they're super expensive, I think. Probably everybody wants to get one of those. <laughs> you have to ride side saddle. I guess so. If I become president, I will make a law forcing all women to ride side saddle. Women should not be riding split saddle or whatever it's called, regular saddle. <laughs> what's the opposite of what's the opposite of side saddle? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna take the lighter to my behind. What is the opposite of side saddle? Is it regular saddle? Or is it split saddle? Is it a straddle saddle? <laughs> uh, did anybody know the answer to this question? Can somebody Google it. Mrs. Mom, can you provide the answer to this question? <laughs> what is the opposite of side saddle called? Is it called regular saddle? Forward saddle, split saddle, a straddle saddle, or something else? I'm scratching my back with it right now. I'm using the, the meow part to scratch my back. I'm not going to do that, General. It's too risky. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to injure myself too much. Which is a more useless philosopher? The opposite of side saddle is side side saddle. It's other side saddle. The opposite of side saddle is other side saddle. That would have been a better joke. Oh, it's good stuff. Good. Ron Solo, you're right. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm at a loss now, too. I think it's... I think 2020 is a, a bust, you know? It, it destroyed all my thoughts for how I was going to go about doing things, too. So, I don't know. Let me go see if Rachel's awake. Uh, since Can Can Kirsten Summer for Goose leaving, it's two hours. That's my cue. I'm going to end this live stream and I'm going to go lie down and wait for Rachel to wake up. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I feel better.